Hey guys, welcome back. I literally feel like it's been a hot minute since I've done a sit down video like this. I'm gonna film two videos right now. I'm just gonna knock them out. So I'm literally gonna be wearing the same outfit. I'm gonna look like the same person. Um, I was gonna get ready for this video, but then I like thought again. And I was like, well, like I always like just like tell people like come as you are. It doesn't matter. So that's what I'm doing. I want to live out to how I actually portray myself. <laughs> Does that make sense? I'm currently at my apartment. My setup is not very cute, um, but the lighting is nice right now. Uh, I hope it looks good on the camera. It looks good like from what I can see, but we don't know. It, things change. I've always wanted to film these types of videos, but I know my audience is not exactly this. And I kind of want to see if I can shift over to this side and see my audience that like actually likes watching these videos. Because for me, this is actually something that I really, really am passionate about. Um, not everyone is, and that's okay, but I want to expand my audience in this desired category, per se, because of how much I just love this kind of stuff, and I'm so passionate about it. And I know it sounds like cheesy and kind of like nerdy, but like this is like what I love to do. So here I am today. I am an English major. Um, I'm on the education, like English major track, so I'm getting my English degree and my education licensure so that I can teach English, um, but also get my English degree in case I want to go into something else. So I'm still kind of like deciding what I what it is I want to do, but my dream is just to be a full-time author. Like that's what I want in life, but I know that's like a really hard goal and that's really hard to actually like make a living off of. So all these things I'm like super aware of, but I am really passionate about creative writing. That's like my favorite thing. Like I literally spend like two hours at the coffee shop like every day downstairs writing. So if I maybe mentioned that in a past video, but I am working on my second novel. It's like a thriller kind of deal per se, which is definitely my like tone that I love to write in as like dark, which sounds really weird because uh, you look at me and you maybe think like, oh, she's like a bright bubbly person. She goes to church, la la la. For some reason, I just love to write dark themed books and dark themed short stories, dark themed poems. I don't know, it's always been me. That's what I'm doing today. I wanted to review a book for you guys. Um, I saw this in a video, I can't remember. It may, it may have been, oh, guys, I literally can't remember. I really wish I could, but I saw this in a couple ones. I think I was watching book reviews to try to find a good thriller to read because a lot of them are too predictable for me. I'm like, oh, I already know what's gonna happen. But for some reason, this one was just, so, something hit different and I saw lots of people reviewing this book and they're like I don't see the hype but then I saw a lot of people that was like I love this one and I was like let's just let's just see because I saw it was really cheap at the bookstore and I was like let's get it this is called The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager Sager? Sager? I don't know I I didn't read Final Girls guys and a lot of people said Final Girls is better than this book but I didn't read Final Girls so I can't like compare the two exactly I have recently been doing like a book a week at the pace that I'm doing right now with school and everything. I can't finish them faster, but I also have time sometimes on weekends or in between classes to just start reading. So a book a week's my deal. So this was last week's book. Um, I don't really know even like how to, how to talk about this. So I'll kind of give you like a synopsis of what it's about. So it's about this girl named Emma. She is a painter um, and she comes to this camp that she went to when she was younger, 13 years old, she went to a camp. Um, she met some people, but mostly everyone was like a bit older than her, the people she roomed with. Allison, Natalie, and Vivian, uh, they were all 16, but Vivian became like her older sister type role and kind of, I don't know, just kind of showed her the things that she didn't know, showed her the ropes, became a like one of her best friends, but also just kind of, you know, that older sister role. Um, at this camp and she was called back in, um, by this girl named Franny who owns the camp to come there and be the painting teacher kind of and just come back to the camp. But um, Emma's past with the camp is not good. So basically the last time she was at the camp when she was 13 with her roommates, her three roommates left in the middle of the night and were never seen again. They disappeared. No one knows where they went. 15 years later, she gets called to come back to the camp and she's pretty unsure about it because she's like 
filled with trauma like she's been painting stuff about the girls like ever since she um, had that experience she's a lot of guilt and so basically the book kind of starts off like that she gets called back she goes to the job she has three people in her room Miranda Crystal and Sasha and she tries to be like that older sister role to them more like a friend than like an authority figure um, and it is a really, really cool and neat place to like have, um, like it's a nice setting for a book. I love these kinds of books where they're like outside their home, they're like somewhere else doing something and things go wrong. Like, I think it just feels better for some reason. I get really paranoid when like there's like home invasion, like books and stuff like that. It like freaks me out. Um, I just watched the movie Hush last night and it's everyone's like oh it's so scary i watched it and i was like this is so stupid sorry if you really like that movie but i was like home invasion it's, it's halloween today's november 1st but like yesterday was halloween i was like i want to scare myself a little bit get myself a little of the spooks no it did not make me spooked but yeah, that's okay anyways so this book um spoil i'm gonna start spoiler free and then i'm gonna like tell you when the spoilers come in um there is a lot about the book that I really, really appreciated. The first part that I really appreciated was the plot twist. When I tell you I did not expect that plot twist, <laughs> I literally, I almost didn't read the very, like, I almost didn't read one part of it. Let me just tell you that. I won't even tell you. Um, spoiler free. I almost just didn't read this one part because I was like, oh, that's what happened okay like i can just put the book away but i just kept going just to like see and then i was like oh i literally was so like i was so blown away it's just not what i was expecting let me just leave it at that another thing i appreciate about the book is you're torn between like this decision to either like a character or really dislike a character you can't tell because there's really good parts of them and then awful parts of them and you're kind of like in the middle and you're like uh, do i love this character and then you're like like for me like one of the characters i really loved this character even though they were not the greatest person like i don't even want to say that they weren't a good person but they weren't but i loved them i don't know i don't know i loved them because i saw the good parts and so you kind of like get this like you're torn between like you really like connect emotionally to this to these characters and for me it was just this one specific character i was like mm, i love them but i like they're really not a good person but i love them so much and i think they have good qualities so you really just get that like odd like emotional pull to these characters um maybe not all of them for you but for me it was just like one really stood out and um it, yeah yeah you kind of are like torn between love and hate <laughs> And I love that because it actually makes you feel something and you think a lot. Like when I wasn't reading the book, I thought a lot about it. Like I was like constantly trying to figure out like what could have happened in my head and like what happened to the girls? What are the things that I think of? And I was like, oh, this person's sketchy. Nah, this person's really sketchy too though. Like oh, this person's weird. Like I went like back and forth just like calling characters sketchy and not sketchy because I was really trying to figure out the plot but it was really unpredictable like i was not i thought i had it so many times i was like this is it this has got to be like what happens right now but i was wrong <laughs> and i was wrong again and i was wrong again and i finally was like maybe and then i was wrong i was like part right in my final decision but i was wrong and i remember i sat there i read it in my closet i know it sounds silly but like sometimes i'll just go in my closet and read and i was just finishing it in my closet and i was like I just wanted there to be more. I needed more. I wanted more. Like, this should be a series. Like, I'm not even kidding. If if he's playing it, he should do, like, a, like, another part to this because I... But then, again, he also shouldn't because then I can make up in my head what I want, how I want things to wrap up. Anyways, that's I know that sounds ridiculous, but maybe you know what I'm talking about. All in all, this book, spoiler-free, the spoiler-free part of this book review, I would probably give this a... 4.5 out of 10 and the only reason I would maybe give it a 0. 0.5 is because or minus 0. 0.5 is because there are parts 
of the novel that I just felt like were really insignificant. Certain things that I was like, oh, this is leading somewhere, and then they just like cut it off and then they never talk about it again. Like with the, I, I don't know, I don't know, with like that guy with the creepy like smile or whatever, and the guy, or maybe not the, was it not the creepy smile? I don't know, guys. I'm like all over the place. There was like certain things that I just like was like, what? Like, okay, and just like kept going on. But I do that too in my writing. I'll write something and I'll look back at it and I'll be like, why did I, why did I do that? That is all for the spoiler free part. Now, if you want to hear spoilers, if you've already watched it, let's skip forward so you can cut it off now or keep watching. So, with the spoilers, I'm just going to kind of like wrap up some, talk about some things here. So, the first thing was like, that I really appreciated in the plot was the like small romance between Theo and Emma. And it's cool how it like went back in time to like the first part in camp where like, Emma had a major crush on Theo, but like Theo was this older, like 19 year old and she was only 13 and she was trying to be bold like Vivian was and like go and kiss him or something and like try to make moves and stuff and she did. And then I was so confused and maybe like you guys can like help me out with this. I just might be stupid, but why did Vivian lie? Like when was she just trying to make her mad or something when Emma was like so mad and was like you knew I liked him why would you hook up with Theo and she was like you really think he would like you like you're delusional but she didn't even hook up with Theo she hooked up with the groundskeeper I don't know maybe you guys can like help me with that because I was so confused like I was like what like real lost but I really appreciated their romance because he was like a really kind person and even after all the trauma he went through after the camp and the disappearance and all that he like and having a crazy brother which i don't know if he saw that side of him ever but like his freaking brother is crazy um which i didn't see coming i just thought of him as like really like an insignificant character I apparently he had a lot of significance but i literally like as soon as i saw like oh he's crazy i was like i know why he's doing this like he's going crazy because of like what happened in the past and what Emma did and you know and his brother going through all this crap and yeah so anyways and we knew Franny was like dying and it was just like a crazy roller coaster of emotions he was probably going through and he was just psychotic <laughs> so that was um a thing in the plot that I really didn't like expect but then once it did I was like okay okay I understand this yeah I loved that romance between them he was a really like kind person still loved um emma as a person even after like all that stuff that she said about him um and like blamed theo for everything that went on and then when the girls disappeared to go and try to like you know help emma out when she came back like really worried that one night and they were like miranda was like i'm worried about emma and they went out Theo looked guilty again and Emma like thought it was Theo and still Theo was willing to like forgive her for that and I thought that was just like really cool um a really cool thing that he did um then with Vivian this is the character I'm talking about like I love hate her I love her but I I hate her at the same time <laughs> like at the end when we figure out that she was still alive and she's the one who killed the girls because of her um sister drowning and how um natalie and allison were right there and watched her drown and didn't do anything about it she was like i want you to suffer just like my sister did and no one's gonna come for you no one's gonna help you um i was like do i love her or hate her after that i was like she's a murderer but like it's justified but i was also like you don't kill someone over that though like don't kill those people um, but it, literally, I love how that connected with, like, Becca Schofield, her being the photographer, her and Vivian, like, being best friends, and all of a sudden, Vivian's, like, and started hanging out with Natalie and Allison, and everyone was, like, what the heck, like, and she started becoming a different person, and they were all confused and didn't really understand, um, it all made sense. The way they wrapped that up at the end, I was, like, oh my gosh, how did I not connect the dots? Like, that is such a cool plot like the way they just like everything just snapped into place i love it when a story can do that it makes me wonder if like 
Riley Sager, like, did he write an outline or did he just like go? Because I personally don't write outlines. I, I try, but I end up like going somewhere else. Does he, can he stick to an outline? Like, does he just, I don't know. Or did he just like do that and it just all worked? Like, I'm really curious. If you read this book, comment below if you liked Vivian or if you had like a love-hate relationship with her or if you just hated her. Like, I love that she was so kind to Emma and she left her out of everything because she knew like, you shouldn't be a part of this because I actually like don't like these girls. Like, I'm actually planning on doing something to them. Like, they treated my sister like this, but you stay out of it. I'm gonna be like the best friend I can be to you. I'm gonna be mean to you so I can leave you out of these things so you won't be a part of this because I want you to be safe. Like that was something that I was like, wow. Like she's a, she's a good person, but then I was like, eh. she loved her sister. So she snapped after they watched her sister just drown and didn't do anything. I was like, okay, okay. So she wanted to kill him the same way. Um, Drown him, push him down underwater get him to die where no one would find them. And then uh, because of Emma's like schizophrenic disorder, she was seeing Vivian um, when she wasn't there. And Vivian was like leading her closer and closer to like finding the girls. And then she found the girls. They are like, yeah, none of the bones match. Like, um, yeah, this is Natalie and Allison, but none of them match with Vivian. And then all of a sudden Vivian shows up at her art gallery thing. <sighs> Guys, it was just wild. Like I, I have nothing to like say other than just like um I love that everything was so original um from like the camp setting to like the three girls that came in that like changed her life that she was a painter she had like a friend outside all this that like was part of the story he was a big help of the story but he was like very like very small part all these characters she tied in together from like the history of the camp to like oh going to the library and finding like that this used to be like an asylum like oof. incredible like i think this was a well well done book and i love this 4.5 stars out of five everyone should read this if you're a thriller sucker go read it um, but I'm hoping that if you watch the spoilers, like this part, you had already read the book because if not, you just kind of like ruin the book. Well, not, no, you can still like read this and like, like I might read it again because I want to see like knowing how the end is, how everything connected together, if that makes sense. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Um, go get this book. I'll link it below on like Amazon or something or like Barnes and Nobles, but go read it. I hope you enjoyed my review. I'll see you soon. Peace.